How's it going guys? So three years ago, I created this tutorial and I looked back on it and I knew I've learned a lot of new things. So today I gave it a slight facelift and applied some new techniques to make it easier and more effective and also cycles renders faster since three years ago. So today we're gonna to be creating this animation. It's really cool. We're gonna have some fun with transparency, a little bit of procedural materials, making a looping animation. It's very easy. And we're gonna keep it close to the 10 minute mark in terms of how long it takes to make it. So let's get into that. All right, so open up a blank document and I'm using Blender 3.5.1. So what we're gonna do is just get a plane. I'm gonna hit S5, Control A and apply scale. All right, now if you're following this in Cycles or EV, you can do it in both. I'm gonna be using Cycles, but if you wanna use EV, the important thing to do here is first, let's go ahead, click here, create a new material. We'll go back up here, switch over here to EV, turn on Bloom and your screen space reflections, turn off half res trace and bring your trace precision all the way up for the best reflections. Now over here, what you're gonna to wanna to do with this new material, go all the way to the bottom on blend mode, go to alpha blend. And that should allow transparency. So you can follow along in the EV if you really need to but I think the reflections really look the best in cycles. So we're gonna be going forward in cycles. I'm gonna give myself 800 samples. You don't really need that many because you can denoise, but I'm comfortable with 800. You can go much lower. All right, let's head over to shading because this is really where the magic, magic is going to happen. So I'm gonna kill those and we're gonna go up here and I'm gonna go to the cycles view and dive in. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and delete the principle. I'm gonna go ahead and get in a mix. So I've been shift A mix shader. Plug that there. We're gonna get in a transparent BSDF. Plug that into the bottom. We're gonna get an emission and we're gonna plug that into the top. We need to go ahead and get in a color ramp and plug that into the factor. And now you may have noticed like there's some green here that may be different. I think you meant how this is normally blue or orange, um, but that's just a theme change. You're still in the same version of Blender as me, just in case that confuses you. Nothing different. So let's go ahead and get in a Voronoi texture. And we're gonna go from 3D to 2D, and that's gonna make it a little bit easier for your computer to process this. We're gonna plug distance into the color ramp, and now you can see it's working. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hit Control T with that node with that node wrangler enabled. It comes with Blender by default, and we're gonna go to the object coordinate. Now we have this fun guy. I'm gonna bring my scale in the Voronoi to 32, and that's gonna go really crazy, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get in a Musgrave texture, pop it right there, and we're gonna go to a scale of 0.8 and bring your detail to 1.71. That's gonna just change it up just a little bit, but in my process, it worked out better that way. And we're gonna go from 3D to 4D, and that's gonna allow us to actually loop the movement of this texture. Next, we need to do is go from linear to constant on this color ramp and then just bring it in and now we have this emissive material and I'm actually gonna paste in my original value. So go ahead and do 0 0.06 and you'll get the same uh, value that I do. Now let's have a little bit of fun with this. Let's go ahead and bring the emission strength to say 10. It's gonna brighten it up. And then let's go back to layout, shift A and get in an empty plane axis. Click back on the plane and go to your modifiers. Add modifier and we're gonna get an array. Now I'm gonna go to the uh, cycles view here so we can watch this happen in real time because that's just, that's the fun of it. We're gonna go turn off relative offset, do object offset and select that empty. And then I'm just gonna give it maybe like five on the count. This is completely up to you. And then just go ahead and bring it up. And now you have that really cool ribbon look. It's really, really awesome. Now we need to have a floor so we can have some reflections of this thing. I'm gonna bring my world brightness all the way to uh, black and then get a mesh, get a plane, and scale it to fit. And you can see there's some stuff under it. So just bring, bring the floor all the way here so we can see the bottom. And then in your light paths, go to your light paths and bring transparent up to 13. That's gonna give you the best result when it comes to making it metallic. So what you can do here is you can click new here on that material and then make it metallic. And then you can bring your roughness down if you want. And now you have these really cool reflections. And personally, I don't like them to be that bright. So you can bring your base color down and control the brightness of your reflection. Um, if you have real-time materials, I'm gonna go to real-time materials here and you can go, and what I did was I went to the uh, the basics selection and used the basic metal. And that give, gave me something really cool. Uh, in my opinion, much more interesting reflections as you can zoom in 
and you can see how it has some pretty nice reflections. You can bring the pattern scale down to maybe five to make that bigger and then meet your roughness here halfway. And now you have some pretty nice reflections. Uh, if you don't have real time materials, sticking to uh, just kind of your basic metal, which we can go back to that, click new, go to metallic and then bring your roughness down a little bit to have some fun with it. And then bring your base color down to a mid. And that's how I had done it, um, I believe in the original render because you still get this really, really nice look. All right, let's go back to shading and let's give this guy some color. So let's click right here and then I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna actually hit Shift D, plug that there and then plug the distance from the Voronoi into that. And then let's go ahead, take this fella and make it whatever color you want. So I'm gonna go ahead with a blue and then make this guy here um, make it a kind of red orange and then bring it in until it starts to attach itself and there we go That's our color and you can bring the strength up too if you'd like to so that you can activate some glowing and compositing if you want to do that All right, so now we're set up for animation. So let's go back to the uh, the layout view and Maybe I'll go here to EV the EV view So that it's easier on my computer. I'm gonna hit shift a and get in my camera. So where is he at right there? And then I'm gonna hit Control Alt Zero. Maybe adjust my angle like that. Control Alt Zero in the camera settings. So click on the camera in the outliner, hit the little green camera. I'm gonna go from perspective to orthographic and then play with your orthographic scale and then hit G to move it around. I do like to zoom in and really just enjoy the negative space that this offers. And then we can go back to cycles and really look at it. I'm going to hit F3 and type in render region. Get my render region. You can do that if you'd like. Kind of make it easier on your computer to view this. Or you can view it in uh, Eevee. Back to shading. Now we can go ahead and uh, animate this guy. So that's going to be done in the W. You can notice how, how that's looking. So the W, if any texture has W that you're animating, you can always set it up to do a seamless loop. And that's what I really love about it but it is a little bit of a dance. So I'm gonna highlight these guys and hit G, create some space. I'm gonna hit Shift D on this Musgrave texture and bring vector uh, to the vector here and make sure everything is exactly the same and start your W at zero. I'm gonna hit Shift A and get a mix right here and switch it from float to color and then plug height into the B so that they're both the same. So if you can play with your factor, nothing changes. Go to your uh, preferences in animation, make sure your default interpolation is linear. That's gonna make sure it's a seamless loop. So let's go ahead and bring up a timeline. So click this button, timeline, and then go back to frame zero and I'm gonna do 240 frames. So hover over the W, hit I, hover over the factor and hit I, and then go all the way to the end of the timeline. And I'm gonna type in two, hit I, and then I'm gonna bring this guy over, hit I. And then now they're at 240, go to this bottom one, hit I, go to the end, hit the back arrow to start at frame zero, and then type in negative two, enter. So now if I press play, if we go to the end here, make sure it loops seamlessly, it is a seamless loop. So if you want this to be faster or slower, notice, if we go back to frame zero, I'm starting at um, negative two, we'll actually go to the end here. At the very end, you have two. So if you want to be faster, pick four, and then at the very end here, do negative four or 20 and negative 20. Or if you want it to be slower, do like 0.5 and then negative 0.5. This factor stays the same. It just goes from light right to left. Ignore the, ignore the doors, the, ignore the doors slamming outside. Um, so that's kind of how that's going to work. Uh, but now we are essentially done. We have the animation ready to go. I do want to make the metallic material a little bit more rough. I do want to have some fun with those reflections. And if I press play, we can just move around here and enjoy how nice this animation is. And I can hit render. All right, so this took me 31 seconds at 800 samples to render this out, and it's not even denoised. So you can really cut your samples in half and denoise if you really want to speed up your render. Um, and I didn't even optimize the light bounces. I'm just really just kind of being negligent. Let's actually test that. I'm going to click and drag and bring everything to one, and then keep transparent at 13. I might be doing that wrong. I'm, I'm not the most technical guy. Let's re-render. All right, bringing those samples down uh, brought me to 28 seconds. So it does have, you know, a bit of a difference if you want to kind of crank that down. So you can, depending on your computer, 
it's relative to the computer, but now we're there. Let's just go to compositing and do the last step, which is adding some uh, glow to this. If you're not using Eevee, you already have glow if you're using Eevee. So let's go to compositing, use nodes, shift A and get a viewer node. Plug that there. And to make sure that the glow actually is gonna be in the animation and not just this view, I'm gonna hold down shift, right click and connect them. So everything goes into the uh, composite and the viewer that's going to ensure they work. I'm gonna go ahead, get in a glare node and plop that right there. And then that looks pretty cool on its own. I'm not gonna use it, honestly I could have, but whatever, we're gonna go here to fog glow and then bring your mix down a little bit so it's not so loud. And now we have our finished piece. Let's go ahead and export it and uh, we'll be done. So click on the printer icon, pick your resolution here. I'm keeping it at the default 1920 by 1080. Um, go ahead and select a folder for your output because I highly recommend doing PNG sequences for cycles renders. You never know if you're gonna have a crash. Um, so keep it at PNG um, and go up here, render, render animation, and then just compile that PNG sequence when you're done. If you're using Eevee or just don't wanna deal with a PNG sequence, you actually go from PNG to FFN. FFmpeg video, it's just gonna compile an MP4 for you. Um, encoding, go to MP4 here and medium quality to perceptually lossless, render, render animation, and it'll give you a video. With that being said, um, that's it. You're gonna have a really cool animation much like mine here. Um, when you're done, I hope you're proud of it. I'm proud of it. I love this animation, which is why I wanted to update it for uh, you know three years later. With that being said, thank you guys for watching. Um, I mentioned real-time materials. If you want to check that out, that's going to be linked in the description. It really helps support the channel and the Blender Development Fund. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial.